Hey everyone, welcome back. I wanted to talk today about a specific question that I've wondered that I've heard others talking about, and it's a kind of anxiety that I sense kind of bubbling under the surface for software developers, and that is, will no code replace software developers? And so I wanted to go ahead and give my take on that today. I think there are cases where the answer is yes, just straight up. I think there are also cases where the answer is no. So I wanted to kind of delve into each of those and why the answer in some cases is yes, why it might be no in other places where no code might fall short and we might still need software developers. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first case where the answer is yes, that no code will probably replace software engineers and web developers is in the case of your standard marketing website. So I think this will mostly be seen in kind of the freelance world, you know, up until pretty Pretty recently, I'd say like maybe the past five to seven years, like you can make a living online doing marketing sites for small businesses, right? And even today, like a lot of small businesses have pretty ugly websites. But the thing is now anybody can go online and make a website for pretty much anything using Squarespace or card.co or Webflow. And so I think those things, assuming the person knows how to use them, and with Squarespace, you don't really have to know how to use it. It's not that involved. That has kind of replaced the need for people to go out and get a developer just to have a website for their business. And that used to be a really, really common use case for getting work online, for hiring a web developer. And so I think that particular form of doing web development is at risk specifically because of no code. So I think we're already starting to see that. I imagine we'll continue to see that. I think it's just gonna be really hard to kind of market yourself on something like Upwork as someone who does just marketing sites. I think it's gonna have to be a little bit more involved and we'll get to that in a second about how involved that actually has to be before someone would look to hire a developer. But that's kind of the first area where I think no code is going to win out eventually if it already is. Okay, the second area where no code I think eventually is gonna win out over doing custom software development is in content heavy sites or CMS backed websites. So this could be basically any site that you could think of. And formerly those would be built on something like WordPress, right? So even like a company landing page or a company website, if it is blog heavy or content heavy, where maybe you have a content or marketing team doing SEO, all that kind of stuff, it's probably gonna be on WordPress. And for most people, if it's on WordPress, you probably need a WordPress developer. But with the advent of stuff like Webflow, I think the need for that is slowly passing away. Now, Webflow is not not quite like Squarespace, Webflow is also a site builder, but it's much more involved. The editor is a bit more intimidating. There's just a lot more going on. And so because of that, I think learning Webflow, being good at Webflow is actually a skill. And so it's not just like a point and click. It actually takes time to learn where everything is and learn how everything fits together. But with that said, Webflow offers CMS functionality. Users who generate their own content and can manage it. So I think as Webflow continues to become popular and people continue to learn it. The need for a developer doing WordPress that you either contract or hire just for your website is probably not going to be super necessary anymore. In fact, Webflow has some really interesting case studies on their website. One is with HelloSign, which I imagine is kind of like DocuSign, about how HelloSign's marketing team is able to just generate their own pages in Webflow and kind of do a lot of their own marketing automation stuff and operation stuff on their own without having to use their web developers or internal people in order to do that. The marketers and the designers are able to kind of do everything for themselves. And I think that's where we're heading. I think that's what tools like Webflow enable. So I'll link that below. I think it's pretty interesting if you just wanna learn about it. But like I said, the second thing that I think is going to be replaced second area is content heavy CMS type websites that would typically be something like a WordPress. The third area where I think that no code is really going to make inroads against custom development is scripting and automation. And this is definitely something that has historically needed a developer and something that usually most people wouldn't think to do, I don't think. I think this is more something that developers would do for themselves because we tend to realize kind of how things work, how things fit together, that code can make your life easier, that code can automate repetitive and boring tasks. I've made a couple of videos about that. But I think with something like a Zapier, people are starting to realize, oh, I have all these systems in my business and I can connect them all together and set all these automations. And so I don't have to go, for example, and update the Slack when we get a new customer and start an onboarding flow. You know, there's all kinds of different use cases, but that's just one. And so I think people are starting to realize, hey, 
something that would have previously taken a ton of work, integrating all these APIs, writing our custom script, just to get reminders and notifications and automate flows, we can now do with this amazing tool. And so I think maybe there was a market for that before for a developer to do internal automations. I think what's more likely the case is that companies would use a developer to build internal tools. But with stuff like Zapier, now that's super democratized and open to pretty much anybody. And so I think what we're going to see there is that maybe internal developers that would have been working on that before just aren't. And if there was a market for people who were doing that kind of work before, I think it will probably start to dry up. For what it's worth, for me personally, I like writing my custom scripts, but if it's something that can be done in Zapier, I'll probably just go that way. Don't love paying for it. I feel like eventually you end up accumulating subscriptions for all these various services that I mentioned, but that's kind of a separate point. In terms of just getting the work done, I think Zapier is going to cover a lot of use cases for most people. Okay, so those were three areas where I think no code will either replace custom software development or significantly compete against it. Let's talk about areas where it falls short. And for me, this is going to come down to areas where you must have custom software development. So what would that be? Uh, let's take an example. So Uber as a company. Uber is completely custom. Their app is custom, their backends are custom, they have microservices, they have telemetry, they have reporting, they have automations, they have scripting. And so because of all that, it just couldn't be done with a no-code tool. Their setup is completely custom to their situation, tuned for their developers, their internal teams, the way their company works. And so it'd be easy to look at something like an Uber, which is a mobile app, and a Glide, which is a service that allows you to make mobile apps from Google Sheets, and say, hey, couldn't you just like make Uber and Glide? And I think that's a great example of kind of where no code falls short, which is where you run up against limitations and features and you can't build what you want to. So let's take Glide, I just mentioned as an example. It's great for a very specific kind of mobile app, which is content heavy. But when you start getting into super interesting interactions and complicated flows like an Uber or fill in the blank, right? At that point, it kind of starts to crumble and fall short, not to mention all the things that happen on Uber's backend in order to support the mobile app. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes that we're just not seeing that require a ton of infrastructure. So I know that's kind of an extreme example, but I think it's generalizable kind of across the board, which is that eventually companies are going to need features that are more specific to their use cases than no code tools can provide. And that is where developers are going to shine. So let's try and answer the question again. Will no code replace software developers? I think in very specific circumstances, where the feature sets aren't too complicated and are more content heavy, but in areas where developers really shine, which is doing custom development tailored to meet a specific company's needs, then developers will continue to do well and be needed and have jobs. So I don't think we need to fear being replaced by no code tools. In fact, I think it's great to embrace them and bring them into personal workflows for side projects. I'm planning on doing stuff like that. I think it's kind of no use reinventing the wheel. I think no code tools are great for MVPs and great for getting off the ground. And if you need to do custom development, you can always do that eventually. But the way I see them is that it's kind of code as a service. And so I think it makes sense to leverage the work that other people have already done. That's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel. So consider subscribing. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.